Hello, my name is Igor Blashov. My name is Matthew Tsui. My name is Sasha Naumova. My name is Valeria Isaikin. They're tough and determined to reach the top. Igor and his fellow students want to take on the world, the chess world. And their parents are happy to pay for it by sending them here, to the Russian chess school in Moscow. Chess makes you smart, it calms you. I like to think, calculate and make my moves. Chess is logical. Chess is universal. A 70-year-old academic can play a 6-year-old child. And either could win. That brings people together, all over the world. But not always. In 1972, American Bobby Fischer faced off against Boris Spassky of the Soviet Union. It was dubbed the match of the century. A political power game in the midst of the Cold War. That was then. Today, seven international grandmasters train the 80 students at the Moscow Chess School. They might be young in years, but many have already won tournaments in Moscow and around the country. Chess is back as a national sport, and so is the prestige, something even the youngest player knows. Chess tournaments like this were one of the Soviet Union's favorite tools to demonstrate socialism's superiority over corrupt Western countries. Socialism may have disappeared, but the decadent West is still around. At least in the minds of many Russians. The current world championship in New York pits Russia's own Sergei Karjakin against Norwegian Marcus Carlsen. But is it a clash of East versus West? Chess was one of the best traditions of the former Soviet Union. So it's good to see that tradition make a resurgence. But whether it's as political as it was back then, I don't think so. But it is a return to traditional values. After being buffeted by doping scandals and corruption allegations, the classic board game of chess just might restore some of the shine to Russian sports.